Hello everyone and welcome to the WWE Discussion, I am your host WWE Enthusiast and today's episode I'm going to be discussing Friday Night Smackdown, July 7, 2023 episode and it was a bad night for Roman Reigns. Or was it? Um, ultimately the Tribal Chief would be brought up or would be brought into Tribal Court which certainly did not go down how Jey Uso thought it was going to go down and then the night ended, probably not how Rome Reigns thought the night was going to end. So the bloodline pretty much dominated this show, starting and closing it. Um, however, they did so at the expense of the other performers on the show. AJ Styles versus Karrion Karrion Cross was a match that, well, should not have been on the card because it ended way too quick. Well, not probably will not matter by next week. Um, and then also you had whatever that segment with... Uh, all the women vying for the women's championship was that was a complete disaster but it never could be anything because WWE was in a rush to try to get through things but um yeah with that we're going to get right into the action starting with the uh tribal the trial of the tribal chief so one quarter of the show is dedicated to this segment uh of roman reigns doing some of his best work and also continuing the latest development in the bloodline story so reigns was at his best self here and when it looked like he was ready to hand over control of the bloodline to Jey Uso he would deliver a low blow that gave way to a wild and chaotic brawl that teased Sokoa taking the mantle as tribal chief taking the mantle of tribal chief before standing tall alongside Reigns after bl obliterating Jimmy Uso the injury angle that occurred after the break in which Jimmy was stretchered out of the arena um, and left in an ambulance would seemingly take him out of the picture question is how long does that take him up take him out of the picture is that going to leave Jey Uso uh, to go out at a load when he challenges Reigns for the title at SummerSlam. That match is not official, but it might as well be. The Grayson Waller effect with Edge. So Grayson Waller thought that Edge had chosen the show to announce his retirement. Instead, after a brief walk down memory lane, Edge would reveal that he is not retiring, but rather going one-on-one -on -one with Waller later in the night. And this was a great segment from Waller here, uh, doing everything he could to try to get a retirement angle or an announcement out of Edge in hopes of building up his show in himself. That backfired. Uh, ultimately, this was good, short, and to the point, a quality TV segment. And then we have Edge versus Grayson Waller, and the match was good, but Waller never really looking at a place against uh, his Hall of Fame opponent. He and yeah, Waller went toe to toe with a guy like Edge who has done everything there is to do in wrestling and shined, earning the respect of the veteran who told him after the match that he swam. Uh, now Waller still still plays the bad guy character but a performance like this and the sign of respect you got from a guy like Edge will go a long way in helping them get over on the main roster also get over with the fans as well and then the show concludes with Jey Uso laying down the challenge so um yeah so Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship talk about this at the top of the show it's not official but it might as well be and this was a challenge that Jey Uso laid down um and an angry yet hesitant Reigns appeared dismayed as the show ended on a cliffhanger uh raising the question of if the head of the table would accept the challenge which Nice little cliffhanger, but I think, again, we all know the answer to that question. Uh, it was a good, high-intensity segment that bookended a show that was largely about the bloodline drama. Jay's a good opponent, and there is an argument to be made that Jay Uso should be the one to dethrone the one. But the real question is, will he be the one to dethrone the one? Probably not. Uh, but um, there certainly, certainly is a story to tell there with Jay Uso um, in the next day. Yeah, there's a story to be told there. Um, you know, Jey Uso challenging Reigns for the title and potentially beat him for the title. Again, I don't think it happens, um, but the case is there. Um, and I think there is a story to be told uh, about Jey Uso beating Roman Reigns. Um, so, in conclusion, WWE's return to Madison Square Garden with a story of two shows. The stuff of the bloodline was great. Everything hit, and by this time next week, the summer semi event between Jay and Reigns will be made official. Even the stuff of Waller and Edge was solid and did a lot to help elevate uh, Waller. Then there was everything else. The show's timing 
was bad, uh, with way too many segments and matches being rushed due to the lack of time afforded them. The women's division segment and the Styles Cross match in particular ended up being unnecessary additions to the show because there was barely any time given to them, and as a result, nothing meaningful was accomplished with those segments, basically. Uh, they happened because they involved top stars, but neither of the segments had anything to say because there was no time to do so. So they made no impact because they didn't have time to make an impact. Um, they just happened, and that should never be the case when television time is a hot commodity in WWE. The big stuff ultimately makes the show a hit, but Triple H and company have to be more aware of timing before jam back in a card or segments that do not matter in the end. And with that, We'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.